Hi and welcome back to a new video. DDR5 has been out for about two and a half years now. It came out to the market in parallel to the 12900K. Back then the kits were quite slow, about 4800 C40 were the first kits available and also pretty expensive. Now that DDR5 prices came down and also very fast kits are available, I thought of making a quick update about DDR5. Especially I reached out to Vcolor and they sent me those Quite nice kits. This one is a typical high frequency, high performance kit, 8200 C40. Running these kits always requires also a CPU that can handle the high memory frequency and also a motherboard that can handle the frequency. But now we also have those low latency kits like this one, 5600 C26. Then I asked myself the question how those low latency kits perform in the real world and if there are a good alternative maybe to high frequency kits. Typically you don't need such a high-end motherboard and also not such a high-end IMC CPU to handle the lower latency and that's what I want to compare in today's video. This video is powered by Seasonic with their MacFlow fans. These non-RGB fans combine both a low noise level and at the same time high airflow. In addition they come with the perfect daisy chaining cable management system. Depending on your requirements you can connect a different amount of fans directly with each other. For example two or three fans for water cooling on a radiator. The fans are held together with a magnetic system which is extremely strong and also electrically connects the fans. With additional adapters you can extend this even further. So for example two fans on top of your PC for the AIO and a third fan as case exhaust fan. Find out more about Seasonic's MacFlow fans in the description below. These are the two kits we're going to use 8200 C40 on the left. This is also a dual 24 gigabyte kit while the right one with the lower latency is a dual 16 gigabyte kit. Unfortunately I couldn't find yet a dual 24 gigabyte kit with this kind of low latency but I think the yeah the pure capacity of the modules shouldn't matter for the gaming performance in comparison. One easy way at least to do a theoretical comparison obviously is ADA64 memory benchmark so in read with 8200 C40 we have about 125 gigabyte per second, write about the same so 123 gigabyte per second and a latency of 59 milliseconds. If we repeat the same testing with the 5600 C26 kit, you can see we already lose about 30% performance in both read and write, drop down from about 125 to 89 gigabyte per second. And in latency, it went up from about 59 to 68 nanoseconds. To see how big the influence of the timings on the testing result is, I decided to simply take the low latency kit to the latency of the fast kit. So we're changing from C26 to C40. Now the interesting thing is that both read and write don't change a lot in ADA64. That's almost measurement tolerance. There's only a big impact on latency, well not that big, but it's about 10 nanoseconds difference. So the overall difference from C26 to C40 might be a lot less than you maybe think. Uh, back in BIOS I want to talk about the refresh interval, so if we go down we see here is TREFI and currently this is uh, 5500 in my case and you can try this value which is rather high but in theory I could go even higher, I could go up to 262k but not sure if that will work. It also doesn't work on a lot of boards and memory kits so that's the value I want to try first and see the impact. We're back at the 5600 C26, but you can see read improved by about 5% and also latency decreased from 69 to about 64 nanoseconds. With memory sticks, the data is stored in cells, basically tiny capacitors, and they can lose the information very quickly within milliseconds. So if you take off the power of the memory module, it will just lose its information instantly. That's why those refresh intervals are required to constantly refresh the information to keep checking if the cell is either a zero or a one. And this tweak with adjusting TREFI is basically yeah, delaying the refresh interval. It is causing the memory stick to perform less of those refresh intervals, which means that in theory, the memory stick has more time to perform other actions such as a read or write cycle and that's why the performance increases. But it can also have the disadvantage that your data might be less accurate. So for example if you have two less uh, refresh intervals then it might be a zero instead of a one in one of the memory cells which might not be that relevant for gaming but it can cause instability and it will also cause your memory modules to become much, much warmer. 
that means you will definitely have to have additional airflow on your memory modules or maybe even active cooling to do those kind of tweaks, especially if you go up into the higher regions of 65K or above. In total, I tested four different games, starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I typically selected a lower resolution, such as 1080p for Assassin's Creed. And the setup is the RTX 4090 with the 4900KS with unlocked power limit. So in those conditions, you are typically running into the CPU limit. So just CPU bottleneck. That also means that if you cannot really find a big difference in these scenarios, most likely in a more realistic daily scenario such as higher resolution, 1080p, 1440p or 4K resolution, the difference might be much smaller than what you can see here. In total, I tested six different memory configurations, starting with the 5600 kit with the stock timings, so C26, then also with a slower C40, and then back to the C26 also with the set TREFI tweak. In addition, I picked this 6000 C30 kit, which I think is very common when it comes to price performance ratio, and then the kit I was talking about with 8200 C40. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the differences between those different configurations are very small, except for the 5600 C40 configuration, which is just pretty slow. But if you look at the average FPS, they're all pretty close together with about 230 FPS. Only looking at the 1% low, you can see bigger differences, but they're still small. So for example, the 5600 C26 to 8200 C40, there's just 4% difference. In Cyberpunk 2077 with 1080p resolution and disabled ray tracing, it's a little bit different. 5600 C40 is still pretty slow. And also between 5600 C26 with TREFI tweak and without, there is almost no difference. But if you compare it to the 8200 C40 kits, there is a performance improvement of about 11% due to the very fast memory kit. The 6000 C30 is in the middle and is only slightly faster than 5600 C26. In Counter-Strike 2 with 4K resolution, max settings and also disable FPS limits, only the 5600 C40 is again slow. But the rest, there is almost no difference between those different configurations. Interestingly though, if you take a look at the TREFI tweaks, this was the only scenario where this led to a performance decrease. That was surprising. And in this scenario of Counter-Strike 2, the 8200 kit would not be worth the price over 6000 C30. However, if we switch to Valorant, there are much bigger differences. Again, it's 4K resolution, but with our RTX 4090, the system is constantly running into the CPU limit. Comparing the 8200 megatransfers kit with TREFI tweak and the slow 5600 C40, we see a difference of 20%. And what actually impressed me the most was running the 5600 kit with TREFI tweak. This increased the performance by 17%. That was much more than I expected. And in this configuration, it was only 3% slower than 8200. At this point, I would also like to thank Splave for pointing me towards the TREFI tweak. That was definitely impressive and much more than I expected, especially in the Valorant scenario. It was impressive how much more performance we could get with the 5600 kit just by setting this special tweak. But as I said before, keep in mind, there might be downsides like stability issues and also that your memory sticks will get much warmer with this tweak. But if you're asking yourself the question, what kind of kit should I get? Should I get low latency or higher frequency? We can definitely see that in every case, generally speaking, the higher frequency will win, even if the higher frequency will have bad timings. But you had the direct comparison, for example, with 5600 C40 to 8200 C40, there is a huge gap in between those different configurations. But again, the scenarios we looked at were specifically taken because you can see bigger differences there. Again, that means if you run a daily system, higher resolution, more in the GPU limit, you will probably not see those differences. The only benefit of running a lower clock is that it's much easier to do in a daily system. You don't have to pay for such an expensive motherboard and it's usually less hassle because especially the 8000 and upwards kits are usually not that easy to run, especially depending on the motherboard and sometimes your CPU IMC is not even capable of doing it. So you might, might end up never being able to run that specific clock on your memory, even though the memory sticks are validated at this specific clock. 
overall going with a more relaxed configuration like 6000 Z30 is probably still the king because you will lose a very little performance but you can save a ton of money and a ton of hassle. At least here in Germany those kits are pretty cheap if you're looking for a 32 gigabyte so dual 16 they start around 110 120 euro and especially compared to like 5600 C26 I would always go for 6000 C30 and probably avoid anything that's like 8000 plus at least for a daily system. If you're benchmarking that's obviously a different topic. All right, but if you're asking yourself the question, should I go for very low latency or high frequency? High frequency will definitely win. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.